الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شحل صدري ويسل لأمري وحل الأختة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a yet another exciting course from Team Sifia. This course content has been created under the guidance of Sheikh Mir Asadullah Qadri and I am a member of Team Sifia, going to be your trainer today. Together, you and I will go into this exciting journey of learning about this important concept of Sahih Iman. So, welcome aboard. Know yourself. Understanding your inner self. This course content is divided into the following lectures. Introduction Allah knows about Himself and about His creatures. Together, this is known as Allah's knowledge. To differentiate between Allah's knowledge about Himself and about His creatures, we say Allah knows about Himself and Allah is aware of His creatures. We all existed in Allah's knowledge as His awareness. Allah was aware about all his creations before their birth. For instance, Allah knew about the ocean as ocean, a mountain as a mountain, a horse as a horse, and a human being as a human being. When we say Allah knows about his creatures, we mean he knows about our person, Zat, and our attributes, Sifat, both. It is in Quran. And Allah knows about everything. an 64. How did we exist in Allah's knowledge? One might be inclined to wonder how he or she existed in Allah's knowledge. Did we conform to any predefined state? And if so, then what was the matter of that state? We existed in Allah's knowledge as probate archetype. Ayane thabita. What is probate archetype? A probate archetype can be described as a unit of description about every single creation of Allah. It can also be defined as an individual fact of every creature which existed in Allah's knowledge. When it was time for us to manifest in the external existence in this world, our material body came into existence as per the requirements of this world. Then Allah associated a unique soul conforming to our fact with it. When these two join with our fact, person or innate, we came into existence. Thus, our creation is predicated on the convergence of three major components, namely, first, the human self or person innate, second, the human body, and third, the human soul. Human being has been addressed in the Quran with different names like Bani Adam alayhi salam, Insan, Bashar, and Nafs. It is in Quran. And do not kill a person who Allah has forbidden. al Isra 33. It is in Quran. And when the people are joined. at taqweer 7. On the day of resurrection, all people will be joined in front of their Lord to answer for their deeds. It is in Quran. Allah, there is no God but He. Surely, you will all be gathered on the day of resurrection, in which there is no doubt. And who is more truthful than Allah in statement? An-Nisa 87 Human Inner Self The word human self is used in Islamic literature in two connotations as follows. Human being In this connotation, human body, human self, and human soul, all are included. Human inner self or conscience, it is a non-corporeal self of the human being. It has two subtleties or faculties, A, mind, and B, heart. Human body has many external and internal organs. The two important internal organs, human biological brain and human biological heart, 
are associated with human non-corporeal faculties of mind and heart. Human inner self has many attributes like first life, second knowledge, third hearing, fourth speech, fifth seeing, sixth power and seventh intention. All these attributes work in close association with human body's organs like eyes, ears, etc. In addition, human inner self is provided with two major attributes which are known as first virtue and second evil. These attributes are inherent in every single human being. Like other species in the animal kingdom, human beings are also required to eat and reproduce. Like animals, humans are strongly territorial and have the inclination to dominate each other. When the attribute of evil dominates in human inner self, we say it is evil nafs. When virtue dominates, we say it is a virtuous nafs. There are three distinct states of human inner self. First, the animal self, nafs e ammara. Second, the moral or reproaching self, nafs e lawama. And third, the satisfied self, nafs e mutmainna. All these states have been described in Quran. Nafs e ammara. In this state, a human is inclined towards his or her basic animal nature. Based on these inclinations, he or she gets involved in pleasures that are harmful for him or her and human society. Behaviors such as irrationality, selfishness, lust and criminal activities take complete hold. People who possess nafs e ammara become toxic for their family and society. It is in Quran, certainly man's inner self is inclined to command him to do evil. Yusuf 53 nafs e lawama In this state, a human becomes reproachable or conscious about his or her sins. This is the state of a believing Muslim. He or she resists evil deeds and seeks forgiveness of Allah. The realization of the negative effects of his or her wrongdoings dawns upon the person. One enters a cycle of erring, regretting and seeking forgiveness and undergoes a massive battle within himself or herself between good and bad. It is in Quran and I swear by the reproaching self. Al-Qiyamah 2 Subheading 1.3.3 Nafse Mutmainna After extensive training and purification under a Shaykh of Ihsan, when all faculties of a seeker get subordinated to Sharia, he or she finds a way towards Allah. Now, whatever movement is there, it is towards Allah and with Allah. When a person reaches the state, he or she gets associated with the following divine command. It is in Quran. The righteous would be told, O satisfied self, return to your Lord, well pleased with him and well pleasing to him. Join my honored servants and enter my paradise. Al-Fajr 27 to 28. Some scholars point towards seven state of the nafs. First, nafs e ammara. Second, nafs e lawama. Third, nafs e mulhama, the inspired nafs. Fourth, nafs e radia, the pleased nafs. Fifth, nafs e mardia, fulfilling or pleasing nafs. Sixth, nafs e safiya wal kamila, the purified and complete nafs. Seventh, nafs e mutmainna, satisfied nafs. They mention following Quranic verse and say that nafs e mulhama, the inspired nafs, is mentioned in it. It is in Quran, the human was given awareness of its inner self's evil and its virtue. Ashams 8. And they mention the following Quranic verse and say that nafs e radiya, the pleased nafs, and nafs e mardiya, pleasing nafs, have been mentioned in it. It is in Quran, return to your Lord, well pleased with him and well-pleasing to him. Al-Fajr 28 They do not mention any Quranic verse for nafs safiya wal kamila, the purified and complete nafs. However, Islamic scholar Fakhraddin al-Razi in his tafsir referred to the following verse and said, this verse can be described as an indication of nafs safiya wal kamil. It is in Quran and when they listen to what has been revealed to the Apostle 
you can see their eyes brim over with tears at the truth which they recognize and say, O Lord, we believe, include us among those who bear witness. Al-Maida 83 It is obvious that nafs e includes all the nufus. First, nafs e mulhama, the inspired nafs. Second, nafs e radiya, the pleased nafs. Third, nafs e mardiya, pleasing nafs. And fourth, nafs e safiya wal kamila, the purified and complete nafs mentioned by the scholars. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. Nafse Ammara Prophet Muhammad wasallam described the purification of Nafse Ammara as a major jihad for Muslims. It is in Hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, The Mujahid is the one who strives against his self in obedience to Allah. Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Ibn Hiban, Tabrani, Hakim, etc. It is in Quran, certainly Nafse Ammara is inclined to command man to do evil. Yusuf 53 The attributes of Nafse Ammara are its sickness which need to be treated to make it healthier. After treatment, it transforms into Nafse Lawama, the conscious nafs. Nafse Lawama is the state of a Muslim, the person of Sahih Iman, because whenever a wrongdoing is committed, the person of Sahih Iman supplicates Allah for forgiveness. When the nafs is fully recovered from its ailments, it becomes nafs e mutma'inna, satisfied or healthy nafs. How can we treat the sicknesses of nafs e ammara? To control our thought process is the first step in the treatment of nafs e ammara. An evil thought may lead a person to evil, and a virtuous thought may lead him to do virtuous deed. This is the reason we teach people to learn to control thought process. A consideration or a prompting in the mind is a thought that comes and goes. All such thoughts are not subject to scrutiny. However, if a person determines or intends to do something, his determination is subject to scrutiny. Like if a person was determined to do a good thing, but could not do it for some unavoidable reasons, a virtue is written for him. If the person intends to do an evil thing, attempted it but could not carry it in view of some outside hurdle, an evil is written for him. Many useless thoughts come to people's minds and keep them busy all the time. These thoughts do not allow them to focus on important issues in their lives. There are some evil thoughts that increase the dopamine level in a human brain. Over a period, these thoughts occur again and again in the human mind. They are known as evil promptings, considerations, wasabis. After a certain time, they become addiction and permanent source of nagging. Once a thing becomes an addiction, it is very difficult to stay away from it. There are certain habits which also become an addiction, like wine, intoxicants, watching pornography, laziness, etc. All such habits come under sinful acts. Dopamine is a chemical located in the brain that is closely related to emotions. It carries signals between nerve cells, neurons, in the brain as a neurotransmitter. It is responsible for the feelings of excitement, 
about getting a reward or doing something that you love. The emotion of lust is closely related to dopamine. It is the chemical that signifies enjoyment and resulting in happiness. Every time you do something, whether it is watching TV, eating food, playing games, etc., your brain releases chemicals that dictate how you feel towards that specific action. Your brains then categorize these events as good or bad based upon what chemical is released. When something tastes good or feels good, dopamine is released, which encourages you to seek that action again and again. Dopamine plays a huge role in your decision making, particularly those acts that give immediate gratification. The craving for dopamine is so strong that it can overcome your body's defense mechanism. This is the reason why a drug addict will continue to use drugs even at the expense of their own health. There are certain deeds with which the dopamine level shoots up in the mind, like the desire to have sex. Another dopamine booster is the desire to have acceptance in society and people respect you and make you a leader or sheikh. The bigger the acceptance, the bigger is the increase in dopamine level. Many scholars of Muslim sex suffer from this. As their followers increase, they get more gratification and they think that they are doing a virtuous deed by spreading the wrongful beliefs of their sex. Dopamine is the key element which is mistaken as virtue by many people. Muslim sex like Tablighi Jamaat's enthusiasm in going in Jamaat is nothing but the dopamine increase in their minds. Members of these groups are accepted by their followers as virtuous people and are respected. The more respect they receive, their desire to go in Jamaat increases. They think that they are doing a great virtue by spreading the beliefs of their sex among people. Salafism was started in the middle of 18th century by Ibn Abdul Wahab. Diobandism was started by Qasim Nanutwi, Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, Ashraf Ali Thanwi and others in the middle of 19th century. Followers of these groups should know that if they were on the right path of Islam, Allah's help would have come to them long time ago. Where are the results of their missionary efforts? Types of Thoughts There are four types of thoughts that come to our minds. Satanic These thoughts prompt a person towards disbelief in Allah and his apostle wasallam. These lead people to develop fearlessness from Allah and his apostle wasallam. Following these thoughts, the person ends up as a polytheist or atheist. Nafse Ammara These thoughts lead a person to eat, drink, involve in lustful and wasteful activities. Following these thoughts, a person does not care what he is doing is halal or haram, harmful to the body or sinful activity. Angelic These thoughts differentiate between halal and haram, virtue and evil. These thoughts scare a person away from the evil and teach us how to restrain and follow the Sharia. Allah's Leads These enriches a person in witnessing Allah's signs in the cosmos and help him walk on the right path of Islam. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. How do we differentiate between thoughts? As we have described above, 
it is easy to know if the thought is coming from Satan or nafs or it is an angelic thought. How do we recognize if it is a lead from Allah? We often come across situations where we do not know how to deal with them. What actions will help us in achieving success, especially when there are multiple ways in doing them? In such scenarios, we should turn our attention towards Allah and seek His assistance in deciding a course of action. For instance, should you apply for a certain job or not? Should you travel to a place this week or delay it? The best way to recognize if the lead thought is coming from our nafs or from Allah is First, take a quiet minute for yourself and turn your attention towards Allah. Second, become neutral towards the situation or scenario or problem. Third, say to yourself, it may be harmful for me or it may be good for me. I do not know. Let me wait for the lead from my Lord. Fourth, and put the situation, scenario, problem at the back of your mind and carry on with your daily chores. Fifth, a strong thought will come to your mind to do it at a certain time. Sixth, do not act on it immediately. Wait a little more. Seventh, if it is from Allah, it will come again and again. Eighth, then say Bismillah and act on it. Since you have tried to act upon the lead of your Lord, you are not responsible for its outcome. If it is positive, Alhamdulillah. If it happens that you feel stress in doing it, Allah will protect you from its ill effects and you will eventually come out successful. With regular practice, a time will come when you will easily recognize what is coming from Allah and what is coming from your nafs, even in routine halal actions. Practice it. You will, inshallah, be successful in both the worlds. How do we eliminate wasteful thoughts? Sufi shuyukh of Ahsan have devised many methods to get rid of wasteful considerations. They ask their muridin to keep their eyes on the ground while walking in the street or market. If you look around, particularly on the faces of women, evil thoughts may occur in your mind. Certain people have the habit of imaginary flights of fancies. One should think of an integrated schedule of deeds and plan of action for the following few days. If a consideration about this schedule comes again, it should be told that this issue has already been decided. Why this useless thought has come again? If a new idea comes to mind, welcome it and implement it in the schedule of the actions. After long practice of restricting oneself from seeing hither and thither, the mind gets settled on one point and whatever you see, you will see it with the eye of precision. With the eye of precision, one can see the signs of Allah spread in the cosmos. It is in Quran, soon will we let signs manifest themselves, bringing about a change in their lives, both outward and inward. Fusila 53 Whenever a lousy thought comes in your mind, say Astaghfirullah and pray Allah to rid you of it. You can also recite Qul Kullun Minindillah, say everything from Allah, An Nisa 78. When you turn towards Allah, the evil thought runs away from you. Recitation of this Quranic verse also helps in the reduction of considerations. It is in Quran, should he like it, he can make you die out and replace you by a new set of people. Ibrahim 19 to 20. If a consideration comes for achieving something in a specific way, convert it into a supplication and turn towards Allah, saying that, I need this thing and I want to seek it this way. Kindly bestow upon me this thing and guide me in achieving it. This way, all your imaginations will turn into supplications. Supplication is an imperative ordained by Allah. It is in Quran, you pray and I will give you. Ghafir 60. Since supplication is the primary form of worship, Satan will never allow it to continue and these considerations will stop abruptly. The objective of Satan is to refrain you from mindfulness of Allah and see that you spend your life in wasteful activities. Once you turn the consideration into a supplication, Satan will get irritated and will leave you alone and will contemplate another way to deviate you from Allah's mindfulness. When you get excessive evil considerations, change your state, meaning if you are sitting, stand, 
and if you are standing, start walking or sit down. The principle behind this prevention is change in movement. It is in Quran, so flee to Allah. Adhariya 50. Who can misguide you? Never think that even if you try, it is not possible to rid the mind of wasteful thoughts. If you try and seek the assistance of Allah, be sure, insha'Allah, you will be protected. It is in Quran, the people who strive in our way, we show and put them on the right path. al ankabut 69. The control on your thought process will save you from evil deeds like first lying, second backbiting, third slander, fourth jealousy, fifth hatred, sixth greed, seventh pride, eighth hypocrisy, ninth flattery, tenth ingratitude, eleventh stinginess, twelfth deception, thirteenth laziness, fourteenth fearlessness from Allah, fifteenth show off. 16th anger, 17th seeking fame, 18th disrespect of the Prophet wasallam, Sufi shuyukh and religion's elders, 19th reliance on people, 20 self-worship, 21 impatience etc. Once you control the thoughts, it will help you in the development of positive emotions which may result in virtuous deeds and soon you will enter to the phase of nafs al which is the preferred status of a believing Muslim. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Before you go, you can find more information of many other Islamic topics like the one we discussed in this course at sahiiman.com slash books. Hundreds of books available explaining multiple Islamic topics up for grabs for free. So do check it out. Thank you for signing up for this course. We hope you had a great time learning about this important topic as we had preparing this course for you. See you again for another exciting learning experience at the Correct Islamic Faith International Academy. Until then, it's goodbye from us at Team Sifia. <laughs>